and enter into a spirit of worship with these words of scripture from Matthew 6, 25 to 34. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow thrown into the oven, Will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things but strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. So we're all uh, trying hard lately to figure out next steps. And as May 15th approaches, it occurs to me that we've had this time kind of um, that is somewhat predictable. We were asked to stay at home and that brought challenges of its own, but the challenge on so many of our minds lately is what's next? And then the immediate follow-up question, what does that mean for me? Um, what will it look like? What will it feel like? And I have no idea, sorry. 
Um, but I, I feel like it could go many different ways and will go many different ways for, for different people. Um, and so this morning, I'd like to share with you a spiritual practice that might help. Um, I discovered the practice through the Yale Youth Ministry Institute, which has a website uh, full of really great resources, not just for youth. Um, and some of you are familiar with this practice, I know. Um, it is a practice of welcome and surrender. Uh, it's, it was articulated really well by a French Jesuit priest named Jean-Pierre Jean de Cassode, and he wrote Abandonment to Divine Providence. It teaches the value of completely abandoning oneself to God. So providence is the theological term for God's will and power in our lives. And the idea is because we know God is good, God can lead us to a better life than we can by our own will and efforts. So Kasod taught that attention to the present moment could reveal God's presence and providence. He argued that we should surrender our attempts to control and instead rest in God's presence. So one um, kind of metaphor for this is the Chinese fable you may have heard about the farmer with a beautiful horse. And uh, one day the horse runs away and the villagers say, oh, bad luck. And the farmer says, bad luck, good luck, who knows? And so a week later, the farmer's horse returns with 20 wild horses with it. And the villagers say, oh, what, good luck. And the farmer says, good luck, bad luck, who knows? And the next day, the farmer's son is trying to train one of the wild horses and falls off and breaks his leg. So of course, people say, bad luck. And of course, the farmer says, bad luck, good luck, who knows? And then the military comes through town recruiting young men to go and fight. And they leave the farmer's son alone because he's injured. Good luck, bad luck, who knows? So what that story illustrates to me is not that there is no suffering. That's one thing I notice. It's not that there are not ups and downs and pain and joy. Um, but how much of our suffering we create and we cause. Whereas if we were to take Kasod's advice and rest in God, we might be buoyed on the ups and downs. So if you're willing to practice with me right now, I would invite you to practice uh, teaching that rest in God's providence by paying attention to the present moment. So let's just find ourselves comfortable in our seats and take a deep breath and begin to notice. You can close your eyes and open your heart. and become aware of the sensations that you have in your body that might be uncomfortable or comfortable.
and also attention to how you experience them, how they make you feel. And as you notice the physical sensations, you can pay attention to the emotional sensations and welcome each sensation, no matter what that sensation is. You can even say, welcome pain. Welcome fear. Welcome peace. Welcome stress. Welcome frustration or even joy. Now let go of everything that you attach to these sensations. Release the wants, the needs, the frustrations, and the desires that you associate with them. Abandon yourself. to the providence and presence of God in this moment. Surrender the control that you're trying to hold on to and accept all that is present, not trying to change or interpret any of it. If you have trouble letting go of a specific emotion or feeling, you can confront it with a silent statement, I trust in God's loving providence. God is present. Surrendering control to God allows us to walk through the ups and downs of life with trust and confidence. we can rest. So with this practice, It doesn't mean that when we move on with our days, we don't act, that we don't 
work that we don't make efforts. But it does mean that we hold in our minds what the Lord's Prayer says, not our will, but God's will be done. I hope that um, this practice can go with you today and that you can return to it if you found it helpful. Amen. So I will close us with words from the poet Wendell Berry from The Peace of Wild Things. When despair for the world grows in me and I wake in the night at the least sound in fear of what my life and my children's lives may be, I go and lie down where the wood drake rests in his beauty on the water and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water and I feel above me the day blind stars waiting with their light. For a time, I rest in the grace of the world and am free. Go with the peace of wild things. Rest in God. <laughs>